Welcome to the fourth in our series of Building OSM Ireland talks for the second lockdown of 2020. For this episode, we have Dermot who will talk to us about validating the OSM map with different tools. Yes, th- thank you, Dad. Um, so today's talk is actually going to focus on one tool, uh, OSM Inspector. Um, um, but I think it's probably good to talk about the general issue of <clears throat> map. Well, it's a combination of what we call validation, and, and there are different things that we can mean by that. Um, um, I do most of my editing in JOSM, and JOSM has a built-in validator, and it is very much a real-time validator in that rather than um, looking at looking for problems in the data that's already um, uploaded to the map, um, it's even more real time than that. Um, it looks uh, for problems in what you literally have in your editor prior to uploading it, because its main goal is to catch potentially bad mapping um, before uh, it gets uploaded to the map. Um, and in many ways, OSM Inspector that we're going to look at today is the opposite of that uh, in, in ways that I'll talk about in a, a second. I'll say one other thing about the overall principle of, of validation. Um, when we have tools like this that try to look at sections of the map data and point it out something that seems to be wrong, um, it won't always be wrong uh, because what it's doing is it's applying, I suppose, um, rules or heuristics to try to catch things that are unexpected. And unexpected is, is, is often a better word than wrong. And, and I suppose this is why the human element in OpenStreetMap is always heavily prized. Um, for some of these errors, and again, it's, it's outside of the scope of today's talk, but the, in JOSM, one of the things that its validator can do is, depending on the nature of the error, it can sometimes even propose a fix. And there's a button that you can press to say, you know, will I do the thing that seems like it would be a good fix for uh, for, 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 for uh, the problem that you have? Um, but by and large, we, you know, as, an, as a community in OpenStreetMap, we prefer for a human at the very least, even if you're going to automate the fix, to at least have a human say, yes, it is correct to do this. Um, and we'll probably see some examples in the course of this talk of, I suppose, things like that, that um, where, where it's actually on reflection easy to see what the, what, what the issue is, um, but, but where it's good for a human to, to double check it. So let's talk about o, um, OSM Inspector or uh, OSMI for a second. It's a tool um, that is actually maintained by the company Geofabrik in Germany, um, big supporters of the uh, of the OpenStreetMap project, um, and and indeed formed in and around the existence of the OpenStreetMap project, like like, like quite a few businesses. Um, and the goal of OpenStreetMap Inspector is whereas something like the JOSM validator is designed to give you real-time feedback of what you yourself are mapping, um, OpenStreetMap Inspector shows you, what it, everything it shows you is with a certain time lag. So if you look uh, at the window that I'm seeing here, down the bottom of here, you see this data from the 21st um, of, um, of this month. So it's from yesterday at, um, at 7 o'clock in the evening and i know it is because <clears throat> pardon me in this particular view that we're seeing of um <clears throat> highway highway related um potential issues that have been found um in and around the dublin area these pink triangles that we see here there were rather more of them um and just i fixed a bunch of them um because there were just it was it was m- many instances of the same thing um and it wasn't an interest well it, it, it had the potential to be an interesting story today, but I was even I was more interested in in whether uh, the, there would have been an update in the data since since the editing I did, which it turns out there has been. Um, just to for a bit of navigation purposes, first of all, how to get here? You'll see that this can be reached at tools.gearfabric.de/slash osmi uh, for OSM Inspector. But actually, the way I usually find it is I simply Google for OSM Space Inspector, um, and and it should be top of the list. So it's pretty easy to find open it up in, in your favorite web browser. Um, then in terms of what you get when you're in there, it's a, in certain ways, quite a busy display, but it's easy enough to, um, to, to, to just become familiar with what's going on. The first thing is the most important piece is this view option here. So if I open this up, you can see that there are various categories of, I suppose, potential issues that uh, we can be shown here. So 
the top one and the default one is geometry. And this one can feel reasonably intimidating, if only because some of the things, I mean, you, you, know, you see a lot of these big green things uh, in, in the middle of the sea and you're wondering where that is. Actually, a lot of those are pipelines or undersea cables. Um, and the reason that these are being pointed out by the geometry um, issue finder is that it's looking at these and saying, you know, there are some really, really long sections of ways here, which is an unlikely thing to occur naturally. Um, and that's because, of course, for an undersea uh, cable or pipeline, as you can imagine, um, these things are going to be a little bit generalized um, so it's not necessarily wrong. I, I actually don't look at this layer very much, but just I mention it because the very first time into OSMI, you'll probably see a pile of spaghetti like this, and it might feel a bit intimidating and weird. But I generally find it's more interesting to go on to some of the other ones. And let's go back onto highways, which is what, which is where we were when I started this. Um, because here you'll see, and there can still be quite a bit going on, and as I zoom in, you'll see even more, because some of the categories of issue that get shown um, will be um, only shown when you zoom in a little bit more. So again, let's talk about the next type of um, issue, or the next piece of navigation here, which is this sidebar here. So you can see that we've got a bunch of categorized, hierarchically categorized um, sub uh, sections of types of issue. So you can see that, for instance, this subsection is around highway types, issues that relate to highway types. And there are three in here. This, These ones that are colored pink refer to things that are described as highway equals something, but, this, but, uh, but OSMI can't really tell what they're supposed to represent. And the, the convention that you see here is anything that's illustrated with a triangle represents something that happens at a particular point or, or node and anything d depicted by this kind of a squiggly line here um, refers to anything that that is an actual way a linear feature um, and of this particular unknown types the only ones that are showing up are, are triangles so let's just zoom in on one of these and see what's going on there ah now actually this is an interesting one because this is this is a an issue of the the type, the, the, the ones that, are, that, that I fixed uh, last night in quantity were of this type. This is a thing that's shown as highway equals street cabinet. Now, street cabinets are those big big metal boxes that show up on the side of, of roads. Um, and these days, and actually let me click on this to see if we can see, you can see any for any of these things, you can click on them and begin to see some feedback. And like many of the street cabinets around Dublin, we can see that this one actually has had mural art on it. And I think this has been the big motivation why a lot of these have shown up on the map um, of late. And um, so that's all fine. But why is it showing up here? And the reason is that actually highway equals street cabinet is not the standard way to tag a street cabinet. It should be man-made equals street cabinet. So OSMI has now led me to something that can be improved on the map. Um, and so how do I, how do I uh, get around that? Well, I could just zoom out, see that this is somewhere in and around Rush, uh, I think it was Rush, and find my way to there, my editor of choice. But the other thing that I can do is if we look over here in this area where it's showing the details of the data, and again, these are some pretty subtle uh, tar uh, click targets here, but actually each of these small icons does a particular thing. So this one on the far right, you can see if I hover on it, says it will open the history for that item. This next one will open the data browser in the web page. And these next three will open up um, this location in either JOSM, Potlatch, um, Ask Your Parents, um, or ID. Um, so as a, as a JOSM user, I'm going to click here. And as long as you've got the JOSM remote control um, option switched on, which is not default in JOSM, um, and I won't go into this, but if anyone thinks they'd like to do that and doesn't know how, we, we can talk afterwards. But if I click on that, what that will do is that will push that JOSM to load up that location in there, which it has here. So here we have, it's labeled Luke Kelly. You can see over here, I've got the all of the attributes in there and I can see Highway Street Cabinet, which is the, the piece that we're saying isn't as it ought to be. So now I'm gonna just change that to Man-Made Street Cabinet, hit okay on that. And that's now, once I upload my changes, um, that, that will go in there. So I can now, in principle, move on to the next one. We can see we've got highway equals raceway. Not quite sure what that's supposed to be, so I won't sweat it right now. Highway equals street cabinet, another one over here. We, we don't have to do that one now. Um, that's just 
move aside from that, but what we've just seen there is the classic workflow from finding an issue, or at least finding something that is suggested as an issue, uh, through to deciding that, yes, it is an issue and it's something that we want to go and look at, uh, to making a change. So pretty much that's an end-to-end -end workflow in OSMI. And most of the rest of what's interesting is just to understand the rest of what's in here and just how to help control it. So I'll just talk a little bit about some of these other things that are appearing as we zoom in, because you see we've got all these spots appearing. And as we zoom in, you see that these are resolving into linear features. So what's going on there? And why are there so many of them? So actually these ones here, if you look at the color coding, you'll see that these sort of different shades of gray and, and getting into black, these refer to issues related to the highway name or reference. Um, and usually in Ireland, of course, we're plagued in Ireland by the fact, well, not so much plagued by it, but I suppose one of the aspects of living in Ireland that butts up against some of the expectations of the OpenStreetMap project is, whereas OpenStreetMap likes the idea that every road will have a name or at least a number, um, in Ireland, we've got quite a few roads that don't. Now, having said that, and that's what we're being shown here, right? So here we're seeing, if you look at this shade of gray along here, it's saying that this is a minor road, which doesn't seem to have a name or a reference. And zooming into this, yeah, I mean, that this looks like a residential road, or at least it's a road in a residential area. Um, and we see houses alongside it. So the likelihood is that this road actually does have a name and it just hasn't been captured. Um, now, as a remote mapper, there's not a lot I can do about that. So I'm liable to switch this these off so that I can actually get to some of the things that I may be able to deal with. That said, if I was looking, which is the other way of using OpenStreetMap uh, Inspector, it can be quite nice to open it up and look around your own area. And when I do that, I tend to leave more of the layers switched on because if there's a missing name for something, then I stand a very good chance of maybe I already know the name, maybe I'm in a position to realize that there just plain isn't one and that we're out of luck. Um, but it, but if I think there, there might be, I have the option to go there and check uh, and do some actual craft mapping. So again, the way that you use the tool will, will kind of depend on where you're looking. I will say one other thing, make one other comment. You can see that here's a roundabout showing up as having no name. And obviously roundabouts can have names, but it's very common that, uh, for roundabouts not to have names. And when they don't, you do sometimes see that people will tag roundabouts with the name of a road that's passing through it. I never feel very good about that because to me, a roundabout is more neutral space. It's a junction between more than one road and it's not really proper to assign it either the name or the reference of, of any particular road going through it there. So I, again, even in an, a, a pretty completely mapped area, it's not uncommon that you'll see roundabouts showing up in these views. But what I'll tend to do in order to be able to see the wood for the trees is I'm going to switch off this whole category of highway names and those just go away. And as I zoom out now, you'll see I have a much less cluttered um, uh, display here. Now, earlier on when we were preparing for the call, when it came to this, actually it wasn't the, this one, was it? I'll, I'll go to a slightly different one. Um, this the highways area relates to issues related to the mapping of the roadways in isolation but we also have this other thing called routing now routing is an interesting thing because one of the things that we care about on open street map is um we like the idea that when we map a load of roads that one of the things that you that that can do is it can power um routing algorithms that help tell us how to get from one place to another and again i'm I, I, I can fall into the trap of saying roads. More correct to say, um, I mean, even hot, well, what we call hi a highway in OpenStreetMap includes footpaths and cycle paths. So these are included in the overall routing hierarchy. But the point about all of this is we do rely on the fact that um, that roads are connected to other roads and the footpaths get are, are connected to roads and, and to other footpaths. Because if they're not, if you have a situation where you have a, a visualization of the map where it looks as if one thing is connected to another because it's very close, but that it isn't at the topological level, um, that there, things are not connected on a node, then you get a situation where you can't route from one to the other. And actually, my eye was drawn, I'll zoom out again, my eye was drawn to here in the Valley Bowden area that there appeared to be a lot of that going on. And I was a little curious as to why that should be. Um, I mentioned earlier on that not all of these things are are not, uh, immediately um, definitely known to be problems. But let's look at these ones and see what, what appears to be going on here. So you can see that we're seeing these little red dots here, um, which we see here refer to unconnected nodes. 
Um, and I think, yes, unconnected nodes, high likely errors. Um, the, the even bigger red, which we're not seeing, would refer to urgent, very high likelihood. In other words, there are heuristics being applied to see how likely this is to be a real problem. <clears throat> so we are seeing one of these highly likely ones, well, several of them. And alongside each, we see a thing called a snap point. And you see there that a snap point um, is a, um, a location along a linear feature that seems like perhaps it ought to be connected to a nearby point. So let's just let's click on this and open it up in the editor and let's see if we can get an idea of what might be going on here. So again, I'll open this up in JOSM. And actually what we're seeing here, so just to help us relate it, if you see where I'm waggling the mouse here, this is the pairing we're looking at. And the red one here is this turning circle at the end of the road. So, so far, so good. And the X is a point that's appearing along this um, feature, which is shown as being a footway. And actually what's going on here, I, I see this as being a problem in the sense that there is this challenge that we have. We have there are two ways that, that in OpenStreetMap that we can map a footpath. One of them is to literally say, well, look, a footpath is distinct from the roadway that it goes alongside. So let's map it as its own way. And that's what's happened here. Um, the other way is to say, well, a footpath can be approximated by saying, here is a road. And this road has maybe only on the left-hand side or only on the right-hand side has a footway. <clears throat> and topologically, that second option, the second way of doing it can be a little bit simpler um, and can give more predictable results from a routability point of view. Because we've got a bit of a challenge here. Because remember, this is this is um, what we're being told here is we're being given routing tips. So I want you to consider a person who is starting where I'm move, waggling my mouse here. And because they've co they live in this house and they want to visit their friend who lives in this house. Now, if they, if, if they realize that the closest pedestrian route, because they're going by foot. So we're saying, okay, in terms of pedestrian routing, where can I go? Well, I can go along this linear feature, which is a footpath. I can even go along this linear feature because a residential road, you're more than entitled to use that as a, as a pedestrian. And I can go along this footpath here. But if I want to plot a route from my front door, first thing I hit is this footpath here. And, I, and the closest thing to this neighbor over here is this footpath there. And really the only way I can get here, a machine is quite dumb when it's trying to route. So it's gonna send me down here to cross the road here, and there's nothing particularly special about this crossing point. The person who mapped the footpaths in this area realized that if they just mapped these footpaths separate and didn't connect them to the road network at all, then physically there'd never be a way of, of getting from here to here. But by the same token, there's nothing magic about this location. <clears throat> in in, a, in a, a Dublin housing estate like this, it's very unlikely there's a zebra crossing here. There certainly aren't going to be any pedestrian crossing lights. There's nothing about the ro this point of the road that makes it any better to go down to the end and cross here and then come back again. You would never do that. You would go straight across. And topologically, we can't tell that from the way things are mapped here. So let's return to this location up here and see what that means for us. So imagine if I, if I drive up here and if let's let's assume it's legal and and condoned by the locals for me to step out of my car and 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 lock, and, and lock it up here and I actually want to walk over here we can see that there's a footpath and as a human being it's intuitive to us that we can walk from this location on the turning circle on the road to the edge of the pe of the carriageway at which point we get on the footpath and walk up here but actually nothing that we're being told from the map here tells us that now in this instance i think what i would probably do if i wanted to fix that while preserving the approach that 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 has been applied to mapping here is i would just extend it there and then topologically i'd have a connection that would fix this immediate problem and it would make this issue go away in osmi in practice again i'm a little bit the pro problem is i do that but if i do that i'm not solving the problem that i originally called out here now I could solve that problem by drawing everybody's driveway and making sure that it connected to the footpath and connected to the road. And that would kind of, that would actually would be a reasonably good approach because what that would do is it would allow topologically for a road crossing to occur um, everywhere where there's basically a paved path between the footpath and the road. Um, it would discourage people from crossing the grass verges and maybe that's a good thing. And, and it would mean that no realistic journey would be precluded. There'd always be a fairly good way of getting from one place to the other. But what this, what I'm working up to, and again, it's 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 almost a different talk, and it is a topic that's come up 
for discussion recently, the idea of how best to map these footpaths, whether to do it separately as we have here or whether to tag the roads to say, hey, by the way, there's a footpath right alongside. Um, it's a dilemma, um, but it's a dilemma that if you're not going to micromap every every driveway, um, I tend to not favor this approach here. So, Ed. Sorry, Tad. Yeah, go for it. Uh, we have a lot of comments uh, about this, um, as I, I uh, is predicted. Um, uh, we have one from B Unicycling who says, to be fair, on foot, it works fine, but with a wheelchair, you depend on lower curbs and they might not be, be lowered at junctions. That is true. That is true. Um, but that is true. And, and I suppose this is kind of what I'm saying about the micro mapping. So it is, I definitely acknowledge that it's a, that it's a dilemma, right? Because the problem is we're, we're stuck in this, in the mapped as it is here, we're, we're stuck in this interesting uh, situation where looking at this, I can see those driveways and I know that yes, there, there will be a dropped, there will be a dropped curb where those driveways are in all but the most unusual cases. And there probably is at this crossing point as well. But my point is, because there's nothing magic about this particular crossing point relative to the others, actually, if you're going to map them this way, you're almost signing up for, for micro mapping every case where you can get off the curb. Because if you don't do that, you end up with some very... So for instance, I mean, we talked about how to get across the road there. Imagine that you're actually going from this house to um, this one. You actually might be offered a route that's going up all, all the way along this, which, which which is clearly nuts. So, yeah, I mean, there is no perfect way, which is why, again, in the same way that I, I'm very slow to, to point at, at all these marks on OSMI and say these are all problems that have to be fixed on the map. Um, but they're, they're definitely all discussion points because, um, yeah, there are dilemmas with a lot of these things and, and, and you have to work it out case by case. And sometimes... In, when you're trying to solve your the problem and say okay um you, how, how's best to do it and and, and uh, so, sometimes you end up um, committing yourself to doing much more micro mapping than you were going to be doing if you want to solve the problem in the most correct way while still um while, while avoiding um bad routing decisions um, uh, made by routing systems once we micro map the world actually these problems all go away because Ali has a, a, a question along those lines of cartographically footpaths should be mapped, which is, which I, I think you have addressed there. Um, but it's it, it, it's it's a matter of how it's addressed is the is the issue here. And the big C says there are there are reasons other than this one not to map footpaths as a geometry separate from the roads, but she doesn't elaborate on um, what the reasons are. Yeah, I think he's. I I I think he's probably talking along the same lines uh, that that I am. Um, that you see, if if we think about it, um, actually, our, the rep, our representation of a road is already an approximation in that we we map the center line, um, and indeed we allow ourselves to be reasonably vague about how we do it. But if I wanted to map this road more correctly you can see that there's a the curb curves around there roads are actually you know they, they vary in width and i could so if i want to map this section of road if i were to do this i would end up with something that is on many levels you could say a better representation of of of, of the characteristics of the road um but not only is that much harder um, actually, when I do that, it's harder to route over it because then what a routing engine would have to do, if I don't also map the center line, then if I want to permit routing logic to be able to route over an extent of road. So in fact, I'm no longer mapping a road in particular. I'm mapping an area of pavement over which I might tag to say, hey, a car can run over this. And at that point, you then have to instruct the routing logic to say, okay, so I, 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 I guess that the left-hand side of this extent, the left-hand half of it in any given direction is where the car can go. And you could actually produce routing logic that could, that could work there. And, you know, a lot of good things could happen. It would, you'd, you'd be able, for instance, to factor in whether a, an articulated lorry would be able to get around a certain type of corner geometrically. But 
you know, we, we also recognize that this is not how we map and we're probably not going to map like this for, for, for quite some time. Um, and that's, that's the dilemma we have. So to bring us back to uh, some other topics, uh, the first question from the Big C is the main thing I think OSMI does well for buildings is that it can detect a building which has not been supplied with an address. This is in the addresses theme, though I don't see a theme specifically for buildings. So let me, yeah, uh, let, let me call out the addresses one because it was the one that I wanted to go to next. So you'll see here that one of the categories is addresses. Um, and it's not especially concerned with the, um, with the geometry of, of houses themselves that I'm aware of. But let me zoom out. And there was, a, there was actually, I, I live out in Dublin 15 and I want to zoom in on, on an interesting example that I, f that I found in Tyrrellstown earlier today. Um, just need to wait for this to load. Um, yeah, this is it up here, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Now, so there are a couple of kinds of, again, these are uh, er errors with the addressing schema, but if you'll indulge me, I love addressing and, and I've collected a lot of house numbers. And, and I think it's a good example of the kind of thing that open, uh, that, 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 that open street map inspector does well. So let us look at a few of these things. I'll zoom in on these pink splotches here. So these pink splotches you'll see mean no address street tag. So actually what's happened here is looking at this, this is really nice mapping. If you were to look at this in any rendering, you'd say, look, they've drawn and terraced the houses. And even here you'll see that these are curved. This, this, this is the sort, of house, the sort of houses that are really annoying to map because you can't even really use the terracer um, on these did I do these? I did some of these actually, but anyway, it's really annoying because you, you know, whereas the terracer can split rectangles nicely into even sizes, you kind of anything that's going around a curve is really hard to do. Um, but that said, what's wrong with these things? And what's wrong with them is if I click on this, you'll see. Actually, we won't see them. Let me. I'll, I'll actually load it up into JOSM so we can get a proper look. One of the things you see that does happen, by the way, is when you load load this stuff up. Actually, well, it's gone away, but it because I clicked on, on the JAWS and window, it, it actually deselected it, but it selected for me the feature that I'd clicked on. Now, what we can see, if we look at the, the address tagging here, we can see that we have the house number. We even have the number of building levels, but we don't have the street name. Now, I don't know if this one was me, but I can tell you that around Tyrrellstown, I did this, I, I, I left um, uh, this kind of unfinished addressing in a couple of places. And the reason is, if you look at this road, it's just called Boulevard. And the boulevard is it runs around like a horseshoe around a lot of Tyrrellstown, um. But actually, each zone within Tyrrellstown tends to have its own the name of its own development. So in here we can see this is Belgree Crescent. Now these buildings actually front onto the boulevard, but I think that their actual address is a, is Belgree something, and I tend not to know, uh, because a lot of these ones I got by driving around in the car and by uh, you taking voice notes about the house numbers. So there is value in mapping like this, but it's nice that OSMI will remind us that there's unfinished business. So at some point, somebody who's in a position to verify what the actual street name ought to be for these ones, the hope is that they would be able to come back um, and check again. So that's that one. But the red ones, these are kind of interesting as well. It's a similar thing going on here. These ones actually are tagged with, with, with the street name. So you can see the street is Boulevard, comma, Bishop's Orchard. But you can see that the road alongside this is just tagged as Boulevard. It's not tagged as Boulevard, Bishop's Orchard. So you actually have a disconnect between um, between what the address tag says that the road, the street is and what the street alongside is actually called. Now, I just want to, I want to make one thing very clear. We, we're, there are many real cases in OpenStreetMap where that's going to happen. I'm sure we've all been going along a road, maybe, you know, think about a long road in Dublin, like the North Circular or South Circular roads. In those instances, you'll often find a, 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 a literally one row of houses, and it might be called some, 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 something like, um, I don't know, Limerick Terrace or something like that. So a, a terrace of houses whose address... It, and you know, in fact, another a very good example of this is, um, well, a reasonably good example is, is Daily Mount um, in Fibsborough. Um, so, <clears throat> in between the the old the New Cabra Road and the North Circular Road, there's a li little section which I think technically ought to be part of the North Circular Road, but the houses are actually numbered very low house numbers um, against the street name of Daily Mount. But often, 
where you where you do that it's not in a situation where you feel good about cutting off a section of road and giving it another name it's almost like this this terrace name is like a sub street name and so in 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 a lot of cases the way we map that um is to have the address street tag um reflect the name of the terrace and to to just have the street have its own name but the piece i want to focus on here because this 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 did my head in when I look at it. So I don't know, you mightn't be able to see it at my level of zoom here, but you can see here there are six um, individual, I say houses, but actually these each of these is multi-occupancy, I happen to know. Um, and you'll see that what's cropping out here, I'll click on one of them. The address street tag, doesn't take, yeah, the address street tag is called Ballantree Square. And we're seeing the same thing that we saw up here. It's claiming that that's different to the name that's on the street alongside, which we see is Ballantree Square. And I looked, I thought, is it misspelled? And it wasn't. And I couldn't work out what was going on. So I took it into JOSM. Let's have a look at this. So we look here, address street, Ballantree Square. Looks fine. Click on the road. Name, Ballantree Square. So far, so good. So I go in here. And I move my cursor to the end of Ballantree Square. And I move it one more to the right because there's a trailing space on here. And that's the problem. Um, so actually, some, some things, some, some issues can be very, very subtle um, and leading and trailing spaces. Um, actually, the JOSM uh, validator is, is quite good at catching those. I think it has a rule that it, that it applies um, that it will always call you out on. Um, but yeah, somehow this one got into the map um, and, 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 and that's all it was. So again, just something else um that it will do here um actually kieran you called out um again i can't see the chat but just based on on, on tad's description of it if you were talking about um the geometry of the houses themselves i'm looking at this bottom one here address on an unclosed way i'm actually going to switch off all of the other categories here to see if i can find any examples of this because what i suspect that would do is that if there was a house or a building that was drawn but not closed in on itself Here's one here. Let's see what's going on there. Ah, so this is an interesting example where somebody has actually tagged an address tag down on the street itself, um, on the road. Uh, let's see. Let's open it up in the editor and see what's going on there. So we can see it does have a name and it does have a name GA even, and it has address street and address house number. Oh yeah, no, I wouldn't do that on a street. I can see where they're going where they're coming from and actually in a lot of residential areas you do find this you'll find that you've a load of roads that all have effectively the same name but different ranges of numbers and a lot of the time even the sign on the road will will list out the numbers um, and it's possible that that's what was happening in this case i don't think i would do this to be honest i think i think in this instance i'd prefer to um especially for such a short road i'd prefer to sort of even if i'm only doing it as an address interpolation range to sort of generally show where the addresses are, because I think applying it to the road, OSM inspector doesn't think it's great. I, I don't think it's great either. That said, I mean, at least you're giving, you're leaving something behind for the next mapper. So I think it's certainly, it's not harmful, um, but it's also, I think, not how I would do it. And actually it looks as if all of the instances we're seeing here, oh no, actually this, this is different again. These appear to be address interpolation ranges. Let's have a look at this. Um, so here we see, Oops. Here, here we see that the tags are interpolation odd, address street. I'm trying to see why this is wrong. Is that it's it's a while since I did any new yes, I I'll tell you why it's wrong. It's because I think the address street you see belongs on the nodes in the interpolation region. I don't think it's expected that they would go on the uh, on, on the, the ways themselves. Um yeah, again, I think it's probably benign, but I think that that's why these are being called out. Um, but again, if there were to be a malformed uh, building that was a non-closed way, um, I think that it would show up here. We're not seeing a whole lot of it, which is which is good. Um, Tad, any other questions arising on the on the chat? Yeah, so uh, so Kiron has said his his question has been answered. OSMI should be used if we take a pause in adding buildings. And so I suddenly have realized that, that OSMI, being the um, OSM inspector, not OSM Ireland, which, which I had a bit of a 
uh, I, could use, I could fusion over, so a, a bit of a naming conflict there. So, aha. Uh-huh. Well, I'm sure uh, I'm sure Fred won't hold it against us. Uh, Fred, Fred, being the, the the developer of this, well, original developer, uh, for, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Rory uh, contributes to it uh, these days. Being being a, as he is an employee of Gaia Fabrique. And on the, the topic of those curved buildings, I'd like to say to the audience that I have arranged, hopefully, for Rory to give a talk next weekend, which is the last um, of the series, as far as as I'm aware, and that will be on, among other things, how to map curved buildings and and how to use offsets between the Esri and Bing layers. So, so we, we look forward to more uh, detail on that. And I have a question coming in from Brian, so I'll wait for that to be typed. While while you're waiting on that one, I've just switched on and I didn't prepare this. It's a while since I've been in this layer, but one of the layers in OSM Inspector is the water layer. Um, and you can see that lots of what it's showing here are not problems at all, right? So all these blue ones, I think, are just saying, yes, look, there happens to be a river here. But I think the, 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 the redder um, they get, the more likely they are to be an issue. I'm not quite sure what it's complaining about here. Um Possible name errors. Yeah, who, who knows? <clears throat> I would say rather than use up the time on the call, I mean, there are so many individual categories here. I think there's something for everyone and we all find our favorites. Um, but, but So when it comes to looking at one that we don't often use, you kind of have to get your head inside what it's showing you. Um, but of course, if ever you're curious, literally go in there, click through to your editor and look at it and see if it looks wrong there, which it might well do. But sorry, yeah, has Brian's question come in? Uh, no, the typing um, thing has stopped, so he's he has stopped typing his question. So I'm not sure what's. So Brian, we're about to finish soon. So if you if you want to have the question answered, then you need to be quick and get that in there. Any other? Just in terms of, and I'll I'll open up the. Uh, I hope it's visible on the screen. But the sections that are listing here: geometry, tagging, places. Might be interesting to look at tagging actually, just to see what we end up seeing. Um, quite a few here um, and I'd say a lot of these are, are quite subtle but you can see yeah fix fix me or to do um, tag because remember it's a, it's a thing that a lot of people will do if they think that something needs to be looked at they'll set a fix me or a to do so it's kind of nice that people who are motivated to look at other people's fix me's open street map uh, inspector is a really nice way to do that let me just switch it off here no feature tags what's going on here um not sure what that's saying um hidden non-operational tagging on nodes actually sorry i didn't see any of those let's look at some of these orange ones here so what's this one ways without tags so this this is a really nice one so at some point somebody drew away here now it's not doing any harm and perhaps you know perhaps it maybe sometimes you find that this used to be part of a relation or something and it's gone away but again um it can it, it it can mean that this is something that 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 isn't doing any good and should be removed from the map or sometimes you look at it and you realize that actually it's the outline of a building and somebody drew it and got distracted and never tagged it so a lot of the time when you see that you can see what they were what what, what they were uh, looking to do and complete the job for them so again it's just a you know there's a lot of a lot of nice stuff you can do with this so Brian, uh, uh, he came in late, so his question is a callback to the footpath discussion we had earlier on, and he saw and quotes um, the Big C's comment of there not being other reasons, um, uh, to other big other other big reasons other than this one not to map footpaths as geometry separate from the roads. Uh, so Kieran had answered. Um, if I just scroll up the chat, that, that, um, he meant distractions, wash, I used that term it. So uh, perhaps um, if you could recap the whole footpath issue for Brian, please. Yes, no, for sure. It's it's really down to the dilemma where it's certainly true that the uh, with a footpath that is on 
that uh, of course a footpath occupies its own space so it's physically possible to say it has its own center line and we should map it and it's certainly true that the further away it is because it can be separated by from the road by a grass verge and occasionally by quite a significant one and i think the further away it is the more reasonable it is to do so um but the difficulty you have and let's take the very extreme case some sometimes there's no verge there's no nothing literally the 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 pavement of the footpath is separated from the pavement of the road only by a curb and for many purposes and this is where we've got to be careful because of course you know a wheelchair a mobility scooter there are lots of users of footpaths who don't have the option to just step off one curb and up onto another one in all cases so the dilemma we have is that if we want to provide the maximum precision um, about knowing what the routability is from one side of the road to the other then there's motivation for separate for, for mapping it separately as a separate way. But where we do that, in many cases, and actually I'll see if I can get back to the location um, where we first saw um, this happen. Yes, here it is here. Brian, my example was, if you consider the owner of this house wanting to visit their neighbor across the road, actually any routing engine is going to send them up here, down here to the bottom of the road, where somebody has actually indicated that there's a topological connection and they can go back up there. Whereas in point of fact, um, and let's even, even for um, uh, wheelchairs, mobility scooters, anything where you can't just step off a curb, looking at this, we realize that there are driveways. And if all the driveways were mapped, they would intersect the footpath, they would intersect the road. And if you're prepared to finish the job and do all the micro mapping, then there's absolutely no downside for, for, for mapping the, in, in this fashion here. But if you don't do that, then for a large category of users of the footpaths, actually you're going to be sending them on some pretty nutty ways of getting from one place to the other. Because consider, um, I was saying, yes, so the occupant of this house wanting to visit the occupant of this one here, you're likely to send them up here, around there, and you can you can offset this this to some degree. Of course, I might say yes, that's silly. I should provide an accommodation here and map a subset of the ways of crossing so that no routes get overly long. And that's not that can be a good compromise if you know if, if you're you want to make sure to be solving the the accessibility problem as well. And again, I try to be careful. Literally at the very beginning of the the talk, what I said was that in the same way that not everything that's shown in OSM Inspector represents something that is objectively wrong with the map and it's down to us mappers to look at it and work out what the best accommodation is and in the circumstances. The same is true for this dilemma between precision mapping of where the footpaths really are, in which case you create side effects that may need more, more and more micromapping in order to fix them elegantly, um, or the downside of the other thing you can do, which is to just take this road and tag it in a way which you can do tags exist to be able to say there are i think that it's the sidewalk tag that you would say yeah sidewalk left and right exist and that's all you need to know but if you do that then you're in danger of having routing logic su suggest to a person that they should cross the road and the question is if they're in a wheelchair if they're in a mobility scooter can they do so now actually it's worth reflecting on the fact that in this particular landscape here, they that would work equally well because looking at it, there's a driveway here, there appears to be one here, there's a pair of driveways there. So as long as, if you tell somebody to cross the road and as long as they can see somewhere pretty close to them that permits them to do it, that, that has a, you know, a dropped curve or whatever it is they need, then actually it is just as satisfactory in that case to have used the, what I'm going to call the less micromapped way of, of mapping a, a footpath. I suppose it becomes far more troublesome if you're, if you want to just do that. Imagine um, in an outlying area where you have a roadway that happens to have footpaths down both sides, um, but there are, but there are only crossings um, um, infrequently. In a case like that, if you're going to do that, you really, really have to map where the crossings are, or you're leaving certain classes of, of, uh, footpath user high and dry because you're not giving them enough information to let them complete their journey um, but again I think this is a bigger topic and I, I know that there's some uh, quite a bit of interest in it at the moment and I would love to think that we would spend you know a, a, an effort specifically on that to discuss it because this is the thing I, I would feel bad about saying to people hey you know what 
this is how I always map footpaths and nobody should ever do it any other way. Because we, we have a bit too much of that going on in the open street map community and the answer is usually more nuanced than that. Um, and I do think that this is a discussion we need to break off and just tease out and, and really look at what the routing tools are that people are using. Again, we've, I've been talking about sort of um, mobility vehicles like wheelchairs and, and mobility scooters. But of course, there's a whole other class of considerations if you consider verbal routing for people who are blind or partially sighted. Because in a case like that, we, we'd also need to, to do a similar thing to say, how do you, how do you indicate to, to, to those folk where they can cross? And in, in, in that instance, actually, you know, probably you, you know, there might be circumstances in which you do say, actually step off the footpath exactly here. And by the way, it isn't a dropped curb. So just mind your step when you're doing it. So again, I think there are, there are stakeholders in this conversation who know a bit more about it than, than certainly I do. Um, and I think we just need to broaden the discussion so we can work out what's best for us to do in, in a given situation. And we have, and I, I just still come on from Kieran to uh, saying that increasingly footpaths are being built as non-segregated items from highways. The only division is a subtle colour difference in the surface. This is a European standard which rebalances pedestrian and car priority with the desired effect of slowing car movement. It seems that Amaz, the European Union, Kind of changes um, its focus on the car pedestrian kind of balance, then our mapping will inherently have to change anyway. And also, we have a comment from Ryan H. I have recently added paths within Mount Marion with crossings and curb dips. Uh, will will desist pending further discussion. See, and he has a link there. Uh, talk another day. So he has linked to a an OSM um, F4, uh, which which I think is a France dot uh, org link. So um, Unicycling has has reminded me it's a uh, UMAP link to a particular place. Okay. Yes. Yeah. UMAP is actually for anyone who doesn't know it. UMAP is a really nice way to um, produce a map. Uh, onto which you can overlay your own your your own markers um, for sharing them with others. Um, I've I've used it quite a bit and I really like it. I would suggest to to Brian to have a chat with and I'm blanking on his name. I should I'm terrible with names. Um, Colin McAndrew has a project to help people with disabilities to use OSM as a navigation tool and um, part of this reason why this has become an increased uh, of, of increased importance is because of his project. Um, so I would suggest that Brian, you have a chat with him because he is very interested in that kind of micro mapping. Sure, and actually, <clears throat> when we're when we're done with this session, um, I think for the where 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 we are here is a uh, it's Orla close. That's Orla with the G H at the end. Um, and I think what I'm going to do is um use it as an example i think i'll draw in the, the missing driveways and whatever just to see if i can get to uh, you know as an experiment for myself to see what to, to, to just try and tease out what it is i'm advocating in terms of the kind of micro mapping that would solve the routing challenges inherent in in, in separately mapping the the footpaths because like i said separately mapping them I'm on the face of it in favor of doing so but you see lots of examples and i will say this one isn't a foot well let me undo this back to the stage where I got there because this link up here wasn't there. There we go. Uh, so this is kind of how we found it. And, you know, you'll sometimes find situations where even this cross link here won't be present. And that would actually give you a situation such that somebody walking up this road to get to some of the houses over here would actually have to walk all the way up this road, all the way around. And so you, you do get you do get some 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 quite extreme cases. And I think our job as mappers is whatever approach we're taking, that we apply it in a way that is that avoids being unhelpful uh, to to people using the system. So even if it's just a matter of saying, okay, I don't have the time now to map every driveway, but I'll do it at the bottom of the road and the top of the road so everyone can cross the road 
um, in, in reasonable places. Uh, but I'll do a job on this um, once we're done with, uh, with this one to see if I can uh, give an example of, of, of how a micromapped approach uh, could work. I mentioned before we started recording, it's that I wondered if all of the driveways were mapped, which is something that I happen to enjoy doing, so I'm kind of biased in that way. If all of the driveways were mapped and you could then presume that the curb was dro- was dropped uh, for the car to enter uh, into the driveway of the house, then could the routing engine be smart enough to know, okay, there's no footpath marked here, but I can assume that it's clear to cross here because, because we know that that, that is how um, Irish housing states generally are constructed. Yeah, I understand. I, I, let me let me let me make sure I've understood you. But in other words, you're talking about a situation where people had not mapped uh, separate pathways alongside, but had just used the sidewalk tags to say that there are ones. And then the idea would be that if a if a a driveway can be seen to be joining our road, which is known to have a sidewalk, then you assume mobility between sidewalk and uh, and road. And indeed probably opposite side well here's the thing sidewalk and road yes now let's let me do this so imagine there's a driveway there's another driveway so i think yes in that instance and if we pretend that these footpaths aren't here if i am a pedestrian and i'm on this side of the of the uh, on the sidewalk on this side coming down and i want to get into this house i think the fact that the fact that this um driveway comes in tells me I can get down onto the road from my sidewalk. And the fact that this one goes up the other side tells me I can get up to the sidewalk on the other side at this point there. I would say that, yes, a routing engine ought to be able to deal with that. Um, but by the same token, I think once we get to the point where we're micromapping every driveway, I feel at that point, I feel I suddenly feel really good about mapping the um, uh, the, the footway as a, as, a, as a separate way because, because it's, it is correct Clearly, if we can if we can map at the precision of a driveway, we can map at the precision of the footpath. Um, my only misgiving about mapping a separate footpath is if we don't make all the topological connections, you end up with, for many cases, a worse routing situation um, than the one you had before. So my uh, idea was a bit more um, uh, nuanced than that. But you have the main footways mapped but not all of the connections between the driveways as footways, but that um, if you if you have footways at the side of all of the houses and you had a driveway which was then intersecting the footway, then so, then the engine could assume that um, it, it could send you from the footway uh, down across the driveways which would uh, be intersecting the road as like uh, as like a halfway house between those two ideas. Oh, not even a not even a halfway house. So, so what I've just done here, um, more or less reflects, I think, what what I would suggest that we do. So you can see that each of those each of those things says, "Hello, I'm a driveway." The driveway goes all the way to the road, intersecting as the the footpath because it does topologically. <clears throat> pardon me, and it is well understood by routing engines that uh, a driveway um, can, uh, is fine for pedestrians. And similarly, if we assume that a driveway, tied back to your point, a driveway intersecting a road, we can speculate sir, strongly that um, that if a car can get up and down it, then so can a wheelchair. Again, it's a bit, you know, you might want to heed surface as well because, I think, you know, in theory, a driveway could be gravel or something. So, you know, I think there are probably, there are probably some additional things that could be heeded. But fundamentally, I, I think that that will do it. So yes, that sounds very good. And I, I'm just aware of the time where well over the hour allotted and as uh, and as has think has we said this I needs to have its own uh, time and space to discuss. So I think we will leave it there for the time being. And thank you very much for giving us a an overview of awesome inspector and how to look for errors and and how to improve our mapping quality overall wonderful now thanks uh, th- th- thanks everybody for uh, for attending